To start this project, we're gonna need three of these cute little craft storage bins that you'll find in the craft department of Dollar Tree. And then I picked up these two 12 inch wood slats. They were also at my local Dollar Tree in the craft section. Um, we're, what we're gonna do first is we are going to take one of these bins and we are gonna be making sure it essentially stands, but it, it's at an angle. So we wanna try and find the right angle for it to stand up properly, but also um, have the little baskets stand up at an angle as well. So what I'm gonna do for this part is I'm gonna use a pencil just to make sure I'm marking it correctly. And I'm just gonna mark this top line just so I have the angle right when I go to adhere it. Okay, so what we're gonna do first, put some glue here. And we're gonna line it up, let that bond for a second. So we have this side ready to go. So we're going to um, secure the other side with the glue and then we're gonna go back in with our glue sticks. I'm sorry, with our, um, with our staple gun to make sure it's reinforced. So I'm gonna make sure it's even. I'm gonna mark it again. Kind of gives me a better idea where I wanna put my glue. And it just makes the, the process of lining it up so you know you're, you have it in the right spot a little bit easier. So now that we have both of these in the right spot. We're gonna go in with a staple gun to kind of reinforce it. All right, so now that that's been reinforced, we're essentially gonna do the same thing with another one. We're gonna drop it down. Wanna make sure that we're creating that angle, same angle. And I'm gonna use my uh, pencil for kind of a guideline because I wanna create like a very similar angle here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of glue, slide it back down. line it up as quickly as possible before the glue sets. And this Gorilla Glue is pretty awesome, so it sets pretty fast. All right, so now that this is securely in place, we're gonna do the same thing with our staple gun. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing for the third one. It's just gonna sit up a little bit higher, and then we will move on to the next step. All right, so now that this has been secured, what we're gonna do is we're going to use some stain. I'm using a rustic wood effects um, water-based stain from Bear. I got it at my local Home Depot. I, what I love about water-based stain is that it dries very fast and it's water-based, so you don't have to really worry about a chemical smell and you don't have to worry about it sticking to everything. Um, since this is a raw finished wood, um, it should just suck the, uh, the stain up pretty quickly. So the instructions for this stain are that you apply it and you let it sit for about five minutes and then you wipe it off, like you wipe off the excess and then you can apply as many coats as you'd like. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably apply about one to two coats of this. I'm just using a foam brush. You can use a regular brush as well. I kind of wanted to see how it would apply. Make sure we're getting in the creases here. So we're gonna go ahead and cover this entire thing in stain, including the interior. All right, so we're gonna let this sit for a couple minutes and then um, we'll wipe off the excess and maybe do another coat before uh, we come back and we move on to the next step. And here it is, here's the finished product. So we are gonna go put this in my bathroom and uh, see it all finished up as additional storage space on the counter. And here's the finished product. I'm so happy with how it turned out. It works as perfect additional counter space and it definitely gives off that farmhouse vibe that I'm going for. I hope you feel inspired to try this project on your own. Thank you so much for watching Home Talk and I will see you next time. I knew these wooden crates would be perfect to help corral my stuff, but not in the way that you think. I purchased three crates and began by sanding each one. Once the crates were sanded and wiped clean, I applied two coats of paint. I wanted to add wood to separate each crate, so I measured and cut four 1 by 12 inch pine boards. After I cut the boards, I sanded the edges. Then I attached a piece of quarter round trim to the front of each board. This step is optional. I stained each board with Minwax Provincial Stain, then wiped away the excess stain using a soft cloth.
For the doors, I measured and cut quarter inch plywood wood to size, then sanded the edges. I wiped the boards clean, then painted the doors the same color as the crates. To hang the doors, I used small hinges. I attached the hinges to the crate using number 40 machine screws. Once the hinges were on the crate, I attached them to the doors. I painted the heads of the screws the same color as the crates and door. To place a handle on the door, I used a piece of painter's tape. I put its sticky side up and placed the handle onto the tape. Then I marked the holes in the handle using a small screwdriver. Using the tape as a guide, I measured and applied the tape to the door. I drilled the holes through the door and attached the handle. I also attached a magnetic door closure to the inside top of the crate. Using five inch house numbers, I measured and marked the front of each door. I drilled the holes and attached the numbers using the number 40 machine screws. I placed each of the 1 by 12 inch pine boards between each crate and screwed them in place. I attached the top piece, screwing it fast from the inside of the crate so the screws wouldn't show. I love the way it turned out and you can't even tell that it was handmade. It works perfectly to corral all of my stuff. I hope this inspires you to make a crate locker for yourself.